First of all, uh, on your left, we'd like to introduce you to Peter Rojas. And Peter is the owner and founder of a very interesting company called RCRD LBL. Then, uh, sitting next to me, my uh, good friend and also somebody who has a very significant role in the uh, global uh, digital business, Thomas Hesser, who is the president of Sony BMG's global digital business. We then move over to, on uh, my right here, we're very, very pleased to welcome Steve Greenberg, who is the CEO of S-Curve Records. And uh, finally, but by uh, no means uh, last uh, on our panel, a very, very distinguished uh, record man from France, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Morvan Bourri. Morvan uh, is the Vice President of uh, Strategy and Development uh, with EMI in France. In addition, is the uh, Deputy MD of Virgin in France. In a sense, you've been reinventing the whole question of setting up because setting up a record now means you've got to set it up cross-platform. You can't just go to retail, for example, to FNAC or to Carrefour. You've got to really look at a much broader kind of approach in when you're setting up things in France. Tell us what you did, for example, with corn, because that's quite an interesting way of the way you've reinvented a whole process for an international act in the French territory. I think we started from the music and we started from the artists. What, 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 you know, what struck me was, uh, when, when uh, we had a chance to have corn in Paris is their passion for video games. So uh, what could we do from that? You know, they, are, they are so passionate about that, it's part of their daily life. And uh, so we, we investigated opportunities for them. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we, f we, uh, we found uh, an, an opportunity about a new video game being developed by the you know, video game company called Ubisoft which is one of the you know, biggest company, And they, they had that project about, about doing a, a, um, the new, new series of um, a new game uh, that uh, Scorn Singer would be particularly, particularly keen on. He liked this style of game. So at the end of the day, he had, we, had the, the, the band, we had the band to record a song named other, under the name of that, of that new game and uh, to have them to basically write a song, record a song, and, uh, and uh, to have the song being uh, used for, uh, for the trailer of the video game. And, uh, and next step is to have uh, the trailer of the video game being the, the video of the song, and the video of the song being the trailer of the video game. And uh, basically, I think everyone had a lot of fun doing so that. So when you did that, did you, did you first articulate this to the manager and the band collectively? Uh, what was the initial reaction when you said to them, this is what we want to do. We see a link with the video game audience. What was the reaction like when you did that? It's, it was, you know, let's go for it. And, uh, you know, the, the reaction was uh, very super positive because uh, we had that previous discussion where we, uh, you know, we spent time together and trying to, you know, to, you know, to understand what, what they would like to do, how we could have not just fun, but also make some, you know, alternative, you know, uh, uh, find alternative routes into an uh, audience and also generate, you know, alternative revenues as well. So it was part of that discussion. It started from a very, very casual thing, and it transformed into um, both promotional and business opportunity. Thomas, um, is the is the drop in CD sales being uh, compensated by uh, an increasing uh, digital percentages? What was your digital percentage last year? It's um, it was almost 30, it was around 30 percent in the U.S. and sort of in the mid, in the mid teens for the world overall. The physical business, I think, is a business you should not um, uh, talk down too much because I think, first of all, there's still a lot of people who don't have internet access and who are consumers of music. In the US alone, there's about 30% and the growth of internet access is very flat now, so it's still going to be five years from now, 20 to 25% of people. Secondly, I think the, the existing physical retailers are incredibly important partners to us and we hopefully to them as well. We're in the process of just launching in the US an initiative with traditional retail and also non-traditional retail where we're selling music on cards. You buy a card, go to your PC, enter the code, download the song and put it on your MP3 player. And I think this is, this is a model that we will see a lot more of. Music on cards, music on t-shirts, music with concert tickets. What do you tickets. mean music on t-shirts? You buy a t-shirt, you have a little tag on the t-shirt, and you have, in addition to it being sort of an ACDC t-shirt, you get the ACDC song. Peter, tell us how you developed Record Label, because you started off as a writer for Red Herring, mm -hmm. and then you did something really quite revolutionary in the web space, in that you were the founder of Engadget. Coming out of the blogging world, the key to a successful blog, no matter what the subject, no matter whether it's a personal blog or, or a commercial blog, is that there has to be a sense that the people that are running it are passionate, 
about the subject matter, that this is something that they are uh, really excited about and that they really want to communicate that passion for the subject matter to an audience. And, you know, as someone who was also a music fan and, and um, a lot of the labels, a lot of the music that I loved growing up came from labels and labels that meant something, the, you know, factory records, uh, sub pop, discord, you know, kill rock stars. But I realized that there was a lot of crossover between what made a label great and what made a blog great. And this overlap kind of sparked an idea with me that, well, what if you could combine these two things and, and create a digital only online DRM free music label that sort of took the best of what a music blog is good at and what is what I think is still really great about a label. The label is a brand, the label is a tastemaker. Right. And so I fused those together with record label and I ended up doing the site in partnership with Josh Deutsch from Downtown Records. So Downtown is the company that found Niles Barkley that had uh, Crazy, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the huge hit. Yeah. So you developed partnership with uh, Josh and the Downtown crew. Yeah, and um, you know, I sort of brought my you know, technological expertise and my expertise in building a, a, a publishing platform and doing business development, things like that. And Downtown has provided a lot of the um, you know, A&R and, and publishing function, you know, functionality to, to what we're doing. Because the music is free, we don't have to sell it. We just have to believe in it. And in fact, if we don't put out music that we love and that we think is great, then we're not going to have an audience in the first place. How can you make money and develop talent when it's free? How do you, what's the mechanism that you get to actually get someone to pay the freight? Well, so like most things on the internet, um, we support ourselves through advertising and sponsorships. Steve, uh, you've got an act signed to the label called We the Kings. Yes. Now, this is a, you, you're seeing a really good hockey stick pick up in the band's popularity. Yeah. Now, no radio, no MTV, but you're using a very interesting technology yeah. called NABBA. Yeah. So tell us about that. Currently, NABBA does projects with every major label, and we do projects with film studios and with TV networks. And we have this band called We the Kings on... Um, on the label and we decided to see how far we could take a band simply by distributing its music through Nabber. Now Nabber's on all these coding sites. We took the We The Kings band and we made, we made a video, a conventional video, and we put it up on the network and kids started to, down, to, to embed it on their page. But then what we did was we had the band every single day create a new piece of content. So that essentially we turned the widget into the band's very own uh, TV channel. So, so the this is an Kings extension TV of your channel. A and R thinking with the band. Yes. So basically, the band sometimes, some days they come on and they, you know, they'll play an acoustic version of a song, or they'll just talk about their life on the road, or we have some ongoing storylines. The the lead singer of the band's a really good field goal kicker, and he goes to every town that he goes to on <laughs> tour. He tries to kick a longer and longer field goal, and it's actually quite funny. And you know, kids <coughs> seem to like it, and they keep coming back again and again, and it gives kids an incentive to keep the player on their MySpace page once they've embedded it. Not just to embed it and then two days later get rid of it and embed something else because they want to come back every day and get the latest episode. So we also have a button on the, on the, on the We The Kings uh, player and that button says click here if you want to buy this album on iTunes. And lo and behold, um, we have currently the number eight alternative album on iTunes and I think the number 48 this week album on iTunes in the overall iTunes chart. And this is without any radio, not a single piece of, uh, single spin on radio, no MTV, um, and, uh, and very little conventional retail. Um, we've scanned about 26,000 albums, and only about 6,000 of them are not iTunes. And what we noticed, because we're the ones who control how much this player is featured on our network as opposed to other players that we're constantly rotating, um, the more we play it on the network, the more we sell it iTunes. Like, well, I, I, I can tell you that if I, if I run an experiment and tomorrow blast the thing on the player for 12 hours, we'll go up on the iTunes chart. Um, because we're giving fans more opportunities to visit retail. Now, mind you, they visit retail. We're not making them buy the record. All we're doing is we're taking them to the band's um, iTunes page where then they can decide what they want to do. But um, we found that if we can lead people to the point of purchase, the more we lead them, the more inevitably buy the record. And we're very excited about it. Um, I, I, think, I think we're really brewing a, a real hit here because it's very rare to be able to get as far as we've gotten without any radio. And really, ultimately, this is a band that I think will be a very big pop rock band. And when we go to mainstream media, we'll already have that organic base.